There is a story to be retold, and this story contains the sacred numbers, the sacred archetypes, and the sacred symbols, and gives us the possibility of bringing them home to roost, so to speak, to recognize what they represent in ourselves and to claim for ourselves what it is they represent to us. And we know that these symbols and archetypes are universal, so it's a very simple matter to go to that place within ourselves where they reside, not even needing to recognize, as has been said, that all characters and aspects in every story is, an, is a part of our selves. And it's that story about a man called Li Pang. Now Li Pang was an artist, and every day he would go out into nature with his palette, and he would sit and view the scene, that which was there in that moment for him to experience. And oftentimes he would feel himself become the waving leaf that he was observing. He would feel the quiver that was in the dewdrops on the grass and uh, with his brush he would put them onto his canvas. Now one day when he was out sitting by a stream watching uh, the water trickle over the pebbles and rocks, he felt a great mist envelop him, a golden mist, and he knew within himself that this was the great <coughs> dragon. He allowed himself to be drawn completely into the vortex that it created around him and willingly lost himself in the delight and wonder, the bliss even, of feeling this living presence. Time passed, but it was timeless. But when he came back to that state of separateness that we all know, and he was again the observer of nature, there lying beside him on the rock on which he was sitting was a brush. Now he knew that this was a gift from the dragon. So with great respect, he lifted that brass and carefully took it back with him, wrapping it in a piece of silk until the moment came when he would be able to use that brush on his canvas. As the days passed, Li Pang used this brush and felt its silken threads glide over the parchment, the canvas on which he was painting. But then one day, as he was putting on to his canvas this little pond that he had found with the koi swimming about in it, when suddenly he found that his feet were wet. And he 
observed and experienced that he was standing in the pond and the fish was alive swimming around his ankles. At this moment, he realized the magic of the brush that he had in his hand. It could bring things to life. He continued to use this brush with great honor and reverence continuing to paint the scenes that he saw in nature. When one day, a servant of the overlord of his area came by and watching him paint, admired the life that was in the scene being depicted and invited Li Pang to go with him to his master's manor to show him his work. Now when Li Peng took some of his parchments, his scrolls, and showed them to the lord of this place, the lord was overawed by what was shown, and he said, to Li Pang. With the busyness of my life, I have no time to go out into nature, but you bring nature alive for me. Will you come to my residence and continue to bring to life, to bring to me the nature that is shown? on your parchments, on your canvases. So Li Peng took up residence in the overlord's house and he did indeed fill the overlord's residence with the wonderful scenes of nature which allowed the overlord to have the experience of life. But time passed and Li Pang was growing old and he felt within himself that it was time to find a worthy recipient of the magic brush that he had in his possession. There was no one worthy in the environment in which he found himself. But one day, when he was out walking on the beach, he saw a rather ragged young being dragging a stick in the sand. But when he approached the young being, he found that he was actually drawing a picture, a picture realistic, even though being fashioned with a stick. And when Li Pang approached the young lad and asked him what he was doing, the young lad said and told Li Pang how much he loved to draw and he only had time in the days that were filled with gathering the twigs that made the livelihood that brought food to his table. He loved to draw nature in whatever way was available to him. And Li Pang knew that he had found the one who would take his magic brush. So he offered to the young lad and asked him whether he would like to learn how to paint. And the young lad delighted, of course.
chorus of greed. So they made a time and place to meet in Li Pang board with him, parchment, canvas, and brushes to begin to show this young man the art that he had learned after many, many years in preparation for conferring on him the gift of his magic brush. At a designated time, in the moons that passed, Li Pang showed the young man, who said his name was Hua Liang, the way to use the brushes that were to be depicting the scenes of nature that they both loved. The sea, the waving branches of the trees, the grass. Time passed and it was growing near that moment when Li Pang would bring and give the magic brush to Hua Liang. But before that, Li Pang knew that he had to give up the life that he had been leading and go to stay with the young man. So leaving behind the life that he had led and the luxuries of the mansion in which he had spent so many years but taking his belongings, he moved in to the humble abode of Hualien. And there came the day when Li Peng took out the treasured piece of silk in which the brush was encased and handed it with great ceremony telling him this was the magic brush, but leaving the experience of what it did for Hua Yang to find out for himself. Now, one day, when Hua Yang was using the brush. It so happened that a neighbor came by. At the moment when Hua Liang was putting on parchment the picture of a cat, when suddenly a live cat jumped out from the canvas and dashed into the woods nearby. The neighbor viewed this and was amazed and awed, but not wanting it to be known. Li Pang quickly made the excuse that the cat was hiding under the piece of parchment, trying to put off that awareness of what it was that Hua Liang was using. But the neighbor was very perplexed and could not other than believe what his eyes had shown him. And so it began. People began to find out. And because of the nature of having been poor and needy himself, he knew what others suffered. So when a farmer came to him and said, my oxen has died and without my oxen I cannot feed my family, please, please, begging. And Hua drew the oxen, which 
which immediately came to life. More people came until Lipang warned Falian, be careful, do not let it be known abroad, lest it be misused. So Falian was careful, but there was an instance where one of those who had come to him had a visitor from another province and was told the tale of how his family was saved by the young man with the magic brush. This came to the ears of the governor of that place, a greedy, acquisitive man. So he sent emissaries to ask Kua Liang to come to his palace. Now, this could not be refused. So Li Pang and Kua Liang made their way to the governor's residence. When they were inside, the governor gave them all kinds of sweetmeats, tantalizing them with the wealth that they could have. But underlying this was the demand that Hua Liang provide for the governor that which he wanted. Now Hua Liang refused, saying that he only painted to bring to life for those who were in need. And Li Pang and Hua Liang both sensed the danger in which they found themselves as the governor said to them that if they did not fulfill his requests, they would suffer. So together, they decided to escape that place. But they had not gone very far when the governor's soldiers came to drag them back into his presence. When they did, the governor gave orders to one of his soldiers to hold Li Pang and said to Hua Liang, if you do not paint for me what I desire, your friend and mentor will be killed. So Hua Liang could do nothing else but concede. And the governor said, paint me a dragon. So, gathering himself together, Hua Liang took the canvas and his brush and with great sweeping strokes, he drew a huge, fierce dragon. Just as the last brush stroke was being drawn, the canvas began to shake and this great animal emerged from within it, smoke billowing out of its nostrils. But as it emerged, it began to bring out the flame from within itself that was beyond the smoke that came from within it. 
And with that flame, the drapes on the windows of the mansion caught a light and the flames began to engulf all. The dragon took Li Peng and Hua Liang onto its back and flew out of the last remaining open window, flying high, leaving the conflagration to consume all that was behind it. After this, Li Peng and Hua Liang disappeared, but word came back to those who knew of them that there were those, an old man and a young one, who went about the land helping those in need, using a magic brush. What do these archetypes and symbols represent for you? How can you claim them? How can they be utilized? This is the challenge of stories. Going beyond a mind, if only we can put ourselves in the place of Li Peng when he loses himself in nature, in life. What is this magic brush? What does it mean when this brush can bring whatever is depicted to life? Ponder on this as your own deep knowing brings to life in you what they represent. <laughs>